Today's topic is multi-threaded programming. Java provides built-in support for multi-threaded programming. A multi-threaded programming contains two or more parts that can run concurrently. Each part of such program is called thread and each thread defines a separate path of execution. So the multi-threading is a specialized form of multitasking. Uh, for instance, a text editor can format text at the same time and that is printing. As long as two actions are being performed by two separate threads, thus a process-based multitasking deal with the big, big picture and the thread-based multitasking handles the details. Multitasking uh, threads require less overhead than multitasking processes. So, we are not going into detail of the theory part. So. You can, if you want to read more about uh, multi-threading, here is a life cycle of thread uh, uh, video on my Java theory. You can go and see there. Uh, let me show you which video is this. Java theory playlist and go there and see. I will uh, put a link of that video in description. So life cycle of thread, thread Java states of thread. Here I also discuss about multi-threading in Java. So we will cover the practical part, the programming part in this video. And thread priorities we will talk about in uh, short. A thread can voluntarily relinquish control. This is done by explicitly yielding, sleeping or blocking pending input output. In this scenario, all other threads are examined and highest priority thread is ready to run given the CPU. And thread can be preempted by higher priority thread. In this case, a lower priority thread does not yield the processor. Synchronization. Because multi-threading introduces an asynchronous behavior to your program, there must be a way for you to enforce synchronicity when you need it. For example, if you want two threads to communicate and share a complicated data structure such as linked list or need some way to ensure that they don't conflict with each other, that is you must prevent one thread from writing data with other thread is in middle of reading. For this purpose, Java implements elegant twist on age old old model of inter-process synchronization, the monitor. So the monitor is a control mechanism first defined by CER Hore. So messaging, after you divide your program into separate thread, you need to define how they will communicate with each other. And the thread class and runnable interface. So in our previous video, we talked about interfaces. So we are not going to detail here. The thread class defines several methods that help manage threads. So main thread, uh, in Java theory, we have one video of main thread. So you can go there and read more about. The main thread is important for two reasons. It is a thread from which the other child threads will be spawned. And often it must be the last thread to finish execution because it performs various reasons. Although the main thread is created automatically when your program is started, it can be controlled through a thread object. To do so, you must obtain a reference to it by calling the method current current thread. So this method returns a reference to the thread in which it is called. Once you have reference to the main thread, you can control it just like any other thread. So let's begin with uh, by reviewing the following uh, this example. So this is a public class. I'm moving from it from public class. So this is class current thread demo public static void main string thread and this change the name of the thread for changing the name of thread we are using here t dot set name my thread then system dot for printing we are using this and try for monitoring this and catch interrupt exception so this is a program. In this program, a reference to the current thread and the main thread in this case is obtained by calling current thread. So this reference is stored in the local variable t and as the program displays the information about the thread, the program then calls set name to change the internal name of the thread. Information about the thread is then re redisplayed. Next, a loop counts 
down from five with pausing one second between each line. So the pause is accomplished by the sleep method. So the argument to sleep specifies the delay period in milliseconds. Notice the try catch block around this loop and the sleep method in thread might throw an interrupted exception. So this would happen if some other thread wanted to interrupt this sleeping one. So this example just prints a message if it gets interrupted in real program. So you would need to handle this differently. Here is the output generated by this program. So let's see the output of this program. So here is the output. Current thread main five main after name change thread by thread five main. So this is the output. Then so notice the output produced when T is used. used as an argument to print ln. So this displays in order the name of the thread in priority and the name of its group. So let's go to the another example of creating thread. In the most general sense you create a thread by instantiating an object of type thread. So Java defines two ways to in which this can be accomplished. You can implement the runnable interface and you can extend the thread class itself. The following two sections look at each in turn. So implementation runnable. So the easiest way to create a thread is to create a class that implements the runnable interface. So runnable abstracts a unit of executable code. You can construct a thread on any object that implements runnable. To implement runnable, a class need only implement a single method called run, which is declared like a public void run. public uh, void uh, run. So inside run you will define the code that constitutes a new thread. It is important to understand the run call can call other methods, use other classes and declare variables just like the main thread can. So the only difference is that run establishes the entry point for another concurrent thread of execution within your program. So this thread will end when run returns. After you create a class that implements runnable, you will instantiate an object of type thread from within that class. So thread defines several constructor. The one that we will use uh, we will use is shown here. So thread, runnable thread, object clear for OB and a string thread name. In this constructor thread object is an instance of class that implements the runnable interface. So this defines where execution of the thread will begin. So the name of the new thread is specified by thread name. After the new thread is created, it will not start running until you call it start method. So which is declared within thread. In essence, start executes a call to run and the start method is shown here void start. So let's go to the uh, program new thread implement runnable. So Here is our program. We are commenting things and because I already typed to save time. So here is a program. I am commenting this and removing this comment. Class new thread implements runnable.
so here is our program I will explain this program later. So let's go to the our main program. Here is to so create a second thread by extending thread. So here is a class. New thread extends a thread. Okay. And create a second thread extending the thread. Then new thread super demo thread. And system dot out print ln and start. So there is a start. Already talked about public void run and try and catch and class extends thread. So this is the extending the thread class and sleep and as a catch exception. So this is the program create a second thread by extending thread so let's go to uh, this is the example of implementing a runnable so let's go to another example so if we talked about this talk about uh, this program inside new thread constructor a new thread object is created by following statement t new thread this and demo thread here is so passing this as first argument indicates that you want the new thread to call the run. So as mentioned earlier in multi-threading program often the main thread must be the last thread to finish running. In fact for older JVMs if, JVMs, if the main thread finishes before child thread has completed then the Java runtime system may hang. So if the preceding program ensures that the main thread finishes last because the main thread sleeps for 1000 milliseconds between iterations but the child thread sleeps for only 500 millimeter milliseconds so this causes the child thread to terminate earlier than the main thread so shortly you will see a better way to to wait for thread to finish now our next topic is extended extending thread so creating a second thread by extended thread so this is the example of the same you can see with this example and this is also the example of implement runnable and that was extended so the program generates the same out of the preceding version as you can see child, child thread is created by instantiating an object of new thread which is derived from thread. So the program name is same. That's why I commented that. So choosing an approach. At this point you might be wondering why Java has two ways to create child thread and which approach is better. The answer to these questions turn on the same point. The thread class defines several methods that can be overridden by a derived class. Of these method the only one that must be overridden is run so this is of course the same method requires when you implement runnable so many java programmers feel that classes should be extended only when they are being enhanced or modified in some some way so if you will not be overriding any thread other method it is probably best simply to implement runnable also by implementing runnable your thread class does not need to inherit Thread. So making it free to inherit different class ultimately which approach to use is up to you. However throughout the rest of this chapter we will create thread by using classes. So the, our next topic is creating multiple threads. So, so this is the example of let's go above. creating multiple threads 
So this is the example of creating multiple threads. Class new thread implements. This is showing error because uh, here is another program which is not commented. So don't worry about it. So far you have been using only two threads, the main thread and one child thread. How are your program can spawn as many threads as it needs? For example, the following program creates a three child threads. So in this program, three child threads. New th news in this is the you can see this program and try and get exception of try and multi thread demo. So this is a program to multi thread demo. Here is made okay. So our next example is using is alive and join. As mentioned, often you will you want will want uh, the main thread to finish last in the preceding example. This is accomplished by calling sleep and it been main with long enough delay to ensure that all child will terminate prior to the main thread. So, however, this is hardly hardly satisfactory solution and it also raises a larger question how can one thread know when another thread has ended fortunately thread provides a means by which you can answer this question to we exist to determine whether a thread is finished first you can call is alive on the thread so this method is defined by the thread and its general form is shown here final boolean is alive so let's see in this example where is alive so See there. Here is string thread boolean false. So here we are using weight. So this is the next question. That's why we deleted here the alive. So the class new thread and string t and new thread string thread and system dot Allen. This is the entry point for the third public void run. Then catch and system out and demo join. So let's see. So let's go to another program and this program is using synchronization uh, method is call me. So let's see this program. So the program is synchronization method. So let's see the program here. class call me void call string message and system dot uh, print ln and try using try catch and class call implement runable okay you can go through this example so there is a synchronization one okay so here the call method is not modified by synchronize instead the syn synchronized statement is used inside callers run method so this causes the same correct output as the preceding example because each thread waits for the period one to finish before proceeding so our next example is inter thread communication so for that we are using wait notify notify all so let's go with this example so here is class q Here is a wait, then notify and notify producer. So object that is consuming Q entries, PC, the tiny class that creates a single Q producer and consumer. So this is the example here.
now our next example is of example of deadlock i think you already know about the deadlock so synchronize void foo so this is the example of deadlock this program is so in general it occurs only only rarely when the two threads time slice is just the right of it so it may involve more than two threads and two synchronized objects so it's a deadlock you can go through this program and see so then our last program is suspending resuming and stopping thread so this is in our new thread so this is a program of suspended and resuming thread modern way suspend then resume okay you can go through this example i will upload these programs on github so you can go and see there if you want to download you can download so our next topic is of uh, obtain a thread string so when you run the program you will be see the thread suspend and resume in the uh, in this uh, program which is in on this slide so if we talk about the obtain a thread state as mentioned earlier the step that thread can exist in a number of different states you can obtain the current state of thread by calling get state method define thread and it is shown thread state dot get state thread dot state and get state it returns a value type thread dot state that indicates the state of the thread at the time which he, which the uh, call was made state is an enumeration defined by thread so the enumeration is a list of named constants it is discussed in our next video so here are the example of by return by get state uh, for example blocked a thread that had, that has suspended execution because it is waiting to acquire is a lock blocked new a thread has go, got to, has not begun execution runable a thread that either is currently executed or looks good when it gain access to the cpu terminate thread can has completed execution in time to wait thread has suspended execution for specified and waiting so on third cycle video you can see with with the help of example i already done that video in java theory you can go and check there so our next topic is enumeration in our next video so let's uh, sum up this video the key to utilizing java multi threading features effectively is to think concurrently rather than serially for example when you have two subsystem within a program that can execute concurrently make them individual threads with the careful use of multi threading you can create very efficient programs a word of caution is in order however if you create too many threads you can actually degrade the performance of your program rather than enhance it so remember some overhead is associated with context switching if you create too many threads more cpu time will spent changing so context then execute your program one last point to create a communicate intensive application that can automatically scale to make use of these available processes multi core system consider using the new fork join framework so this will and we will uh, discuss detail in our coming videos so our next topic is enumeration auto boxing and annotations metadata so thanks for watching